In this video, we are going to do one of the more challenging aspects of probability, which is conditional probability. Now, this is going to drastically reduce the sample space, and its notation is given by this P of A slash B. Now, I'm going to explain in two different ways how to do these types of problems. I will talk about the formal mathematical definition, but I will also do so from a different perspective, a visual perspective. So let's get to just the explanation about what conditional probability means. Now, take the word conditional for a moment. Conditional means that you're putting a restriction on an event before it even happens. So the explanation of this is going to be if you have A and B, these are two separate events, but you are basically saying that A will occur. Now, this letter A means event A. A will occur given that B has already occurred. So the conditional probability means what are the chances that A happens given that B has already happened. You can also say in terms of groups that what are the chances of picking the group A having already chosen from B, and we will assume that A is a smaller subset of B. Now, let me write that down too. Choose the group of A in B from group B. And this lends us to the mathematical definition of our denominator being all the elements of B and our numerator would be choosing the elements of A that happen to be part of that group B. So we are going to do both ways of solving these problems. And I will show you that we have these two very familiar groups to us. We have the set S, and then we have the set of odd numbers, and then the set of prime numbers. So we're going to do this problem in two different ways. We are going to say we are going to have to choose from group A, haven't already picked B, and we're also going to do choosing B, having already picked A. So there are going to be basically two different ways to do each of these problems. So we're going to just kind of stratify this into four sections here. Okay, so I made four different sections. And I prefer the first method, but I still want to give some weight to the second method. Uh, so let's just talk about really digging this down. I'm choosing group A from the group of B. So what I'm going to do is write out all the elements of group B. Okay, so here are all the elements of my group B. Okay. Now, I am going to pick, That's now that's my denominator, so my denominator will be 6 because group B has these six elements. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to list all of group A, so my numerator is going to be A, but only what A and B have in common. So group A has 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, and 15. Okay, so let's see which one of these have in common. What do they have in common? Well, they have a 3 in common. They have a 5 in common, they have the 7 in common, the 11 in common, and the 13 in common. 
So that's one, two, three, four, five they have in common. Oops, that just turned off there. Okay. So that means that our numerator is going to be one, two, three, four, five out of six. Or point eight three three repeating, which is going to be eighty three point three percent. So you have an 83.3% chance of picking an odd number from the prime number bucket. So if you changed your sample space to be just prime numbers, picking an odd would be highly likely. Now, the second way of doing the same problem is a little bit trickier because what we're going to do is we're going to have the probability of A and B divided by the probability of just B. Now what we have to do with this problem is we have to go back to our actual sample set. Let's let's go to the, find the probability of B. Finding the probability of B would be 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13 or 6 divided by 15. The choice of probability A and B so let's look and see what A and B have in common. A and B have five in common. So that would be the same five we found over here in yellow. So this would be five out of 15, because this is referring back to our sample set S. So this is B over S, and this is A and B over S. And if you divided this on a calculator, which is a little challenging, but very doable, if you wanted to type that in on a calculator, it would look like 5 divided by 15. Okay, Use parentheses above the 8 and the 9 key to get a, parenth to get a fraction. And then divide by parentheses 6 divided by 15. You'd see your answer is 0.833 or 83.3%. Now we're going to find the probability of of B having chosen A, or B choose A. Now my first method is to find my denominator, which is going to be my chosen A. So I'm gonna put A as my denominator and B as my numerator. The denominator list of elements is 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, and 15. This is my denominator. It has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 elements to it. Now let's go set B. This is 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, and 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that is all of my set B. Now my numerator isn't 6. My numerator is going to be whatever they have in common. So here's, they have a 3 in common, a 5, a 7, an 11, and a 13. So they have five elements in common. So my numerator is 5 or 0.625 or 62.5 percent. So having chosen the group of odd numbers, there are five of there are five prime numbers to choose from from that group of odd numbers. So my choosing a prime number from the odd numbers is 5 eighths. And then we go back here, just to kind of refresh and review, choosing an odd number from the group of prime numbers is 5 sixths. So it's much more likely here than it is here. Now let's do the formal definition. This is the probability of B and A divided by the probability of just our A. Now, let's do our denominator first. Our denominator has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 elements, so that's 8 out of 15. And our intersection of the two has 5, mel five elements out of 15. And that will, when you divide this divided by this, again, to type that in, it would be 5 fifteenths divided by 8 fifteenths and that gives us 62.5% or 0.625 or 62.5%. Now, when we, uh, just as a side note, 
Do you note that in this formal definition, the fraction denominators are exactly the same? If you divide fractions, an alternative way to do that is to multiply by the reciprocal. So instead of dividing 5 fifteenths and 8 fifteenths, you would multiply by 15 eighths. A simplification trick would be to note that 15 can divide by 15, which makes 1 and 1, which makes 5 eighths. So you'll note that the numerators of each of these problems happen to be the same numerators here. So this technique that I'm using by writing out the sample spaces really kind of gets to the answer one step in to this uh, al algebraic way of solving it. But thanks to technology, you probably didn't even worry about this stuff I have over here in this little cloud. Now, we're going to do some complements, okay? So what's probably useful is that we list these complements and then do these probabilities here. So the complement set of A is not odd. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and 14. Or you can just say these are the evens since we don't have to worry about zero. Now, the complement of B would be all of those that are not prime. So that would be 1, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 12, 14, and 15. So these are all the evens in 1 and all the evens greater than 2. So these are not prime. So we have evens and not prime. Now, what might be great is why don't you try to pause the video and try to find this P probability of getting an even number from the group of not prime numbers. If you tried it, the method I'm going to use is I'm going to use my B prime denominator, A prime numerator method. So the B prime method is going to be to list all of my elements, 1, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 12, 14, and 15. So this is my denominator. My denominator is going to be the size of B, um, or sorry, not B here. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now I'm going to go to my A, uh, or my not A, which is my set of evens, which is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and 14. I put commas there. I put didn't put commas down here. It's up to you. So now what we have is we're going to look at when they have values in common. Now some of you might be leveling up to the point where you're not needing to do this. You could do this in your head by saying, okay, count the number of Bs and then see how many evens are in the list. But I kind of like having the, the visualness of it all where I say, okay, there's one, two, three, four, five, six in the numerator that I can call as my choosing from not A having already chosen not B. Now this is a decimal is 0.6 repeating or 6.67 or 66.7%. Now if you wanted to do this using the formal definition, this would be 6 fifteenths divided by 9 fifteenths, which gets you the same percentage. Now why don't you pause the video here and try to do this problem. The choosing of not prime from the group of even numbers. Okay, the technique I'm going to choose is the one I've been doing before. My denominator is going to be A prime. So this is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and 14. So my denominator, how big is it? Looks like my denominator has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 elements. And now my numerator is going to be the not prime. So I'll list these out. 1, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 12, 14, and 15. Now I'm going to look for um, 
matches. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. There were six matches. Again, some of you may have leveled up to the point where you're feeling like, well, geez, I, I just looked at my not primes, and then I looked inside of that not prime for all the evens. So that's how I got my six out of seven. Though, I like the stacking technique. I feel that students who struggle might find this a little bit nicer. So if I round that to three decimals, this is 0.857 or 85.7%. Now, before we end this video, I'm gonna give you a few warnings. Now, first of all, the ordering of conditional probability matters. It matters because we found out that choosing A and, you know, uh, sorry, what we found out, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to go down to that next part, that the probability of A from the set of B is not the same as the probability of B from the set of A. You cannot assume that these are the same. And in, there are some situations where they are, but they're probably not going to be in any of the problems we're going to deal with. Also, this is a notation. This is a notation thing. Be very wary when they have or do not have the letter P. Because in this problem for P, A, and B, this is saying I'm looking for the probability of A and B. And that's going to be 5 fifteenths. This is what they have in common, which is the same as 0.3 repeating or 33.3%. This is looking for the intersection of these two groups. Now, if you'll note that there is no P, if there's no letter P, then it's looking for the set. I made this warning in an earlier video, but now I really want to highlight it because you have to definitely make sure that you have you know the difference between wanting the book or the or the homework wanting the probability versus wanting just the set now the next page of work to end section 3.1 is just an entire page of you practicing everything you've done in the previous three videos I would like you to try to do all of the next page, problems 7 through 20, all by yourself, including the picture. And then go watch the video, and the video will grade how, you well, how, you, how well you did. So again, don't watch the next video. Try doing your notes all by yourself, and then try, and then try to see um, how well you did. This will really prep you for the online homework and um, any paper pencil homework we have in this section. All right, thank you for watching.